decades ago, there lived in a quiet suburb a young boy named Timmy Rodriguez. Although he was both deaf and blind, uh, Timmy was quite comfortable in the safety and security of the loving home provided by his parents. One cold night, though, all that would change. The door burst open, the Federales burst in, dressed in black, carrying guns, and they arrested his mama and daddy. See, they were illegal aliens, and they deported him back to Mexico. And Timmy, having been born in the U.S., was allowed to stay. He was placed in foster care in the city. Now, Timmy, being deaf and blind, didn't really understand what was happening to him. He just knew that everything he'd ever known and loved and trusted had been suddenly ripped away. He slipped out the back door one night, that foster home, determined to find his parents. The young boy was now alone in the city. He didn't know where he was going, couldn't ask anybody, couldn't hear, couldn't see. He just wandered in circles until he finally collapsed against a cold brick wall, weeping with despair. As the gray, uh, cold day began to darken with night, a group of boys came along and found Timmy. And, you know, just ordinary kids cutting up. They thought that they'd just, uh, you know, turn him into a snowman. They thought it'd be a funny prank. And they pushed snow up against him and kept piling it against him and piling it. So there was nothing left but Timmy's little anguished face with frozen tears on the cheeks. But kept on snowing and kept on snowing, and pretty soon the face was covered as well. Timmy froze to death in that snowman that night. Body wasn't discovered until the spring. Well, the media got a hold of this, of course, and they ran with it. One of them boys that was involved, he saw the story, and he was horrified. At just about Timmy's age, he couldn't imagine what it would be like to be Timmy, trapped inside that snowman, slowly freezing to death inside this icy tomb. Uh, his name was David, and he soon began to have nightmares that it was he himself inside the snowman, unable to even cry as his eyes froze shut forever. One morning after waking from just such a dream, David determined to do something about this. Uh, he approached his father and he said, Daddy, take me to Washington, D.C. Let me talk to them senators. I know I can make a difference. David's daddy, proud of his son's initiative, arranged the trip. David appeared before the Senate uh, the following week and made an impassioned plea to the gathered senators. He said, I know that you've heard the story of Timmy Rodriguez, little boy that froze to death inside the snowman. His voice was small but powerful inside the hushed amphitheater. I can't sleep at night without having nightmares that it's not Timmy, but I that's frozen to death inside the snowman. I know that you're powerful men and you can do something about this. There was a hush in the chamber and finally one senator spoke up and said, we're powerful men, but we can't save the world. David, firm in his conviction, said, I know that you can't save the world, but you can do something. You must do something. Finally, he added, realizing they weren't being persuaded. And I tell you what, my daddy will donate out of his pocket a hundred million dollars to each of y'all's campaigns be divided amongst you if you just lower the top marginal tax rate down to 27 percent so that my daddy can keep enough of his money that i don't ever have to fear freezing to death in the snowman myself well you see that young man's name his full name was david coke his father, Charles, understandably taken aback by the amount of money promised, nonetheless stood by his son and agreed to honor the pledge. The money was exchanged, the law was passed, and over the intervening years, the Koch family made upwards of $89 billion, enough money so that David and his children and his children's 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 children, you get what I'm saying, they would never have to face freezing to death inside that snowman. Now, we often think of the poor as useless, just drains on the backs of men like me. But Timmy and David's story show that that just ain't so. It's in the suffering of the poor that dozens of us at the very top, the most important men among us, find the will to continue the struggle to make sure that we never have to face that snowman ourselves. Tonight, let us remember all of the little Timmies of America 
And I want you to think twice about giving your hard-earned money to charity, that for it's only through the suffering of the poor that their otherwise useless and valueless lives have any meaning at all. Cheers to you, and God bless America, and Merry Christmas.